I want to start the question with you, uh, Mr. Mochochoko, um, for the ICC. When you hear the, the AU's accusations against it being racially biased, in fact, I believe uh, Ethiopian Prime Minister Dessalane said it was uh, conducting a racial hunt. What is your position on that? Um, thank you very much, and thank you very much for this opportunity. I think the prosecutor has clearly articulated the position of the court on this issue. Not only have African leaders themselves come to the ICC and requested assistance, but African victims themselves, mm -hmm. in all the situations that we are handling, are crying out for justice. And what the ICC is doing in Africa is to address the concerns and the cries of these victims. And again, as a prosecutor, and in fact, as the introduction clearly indicated, ICC is in Africa, in most of the cases in Africa, because it was the Africans themselves who called upon the ICC to come in and help them. ICC did not proactively seek to go into Africa. Well, now, Mr. Mosochoko, that's and only true of four of those eight cases. We know that the other two, two at least, were solicited by the office of the prosecutor directly, and then the other ones by the United Nations. And also, while you think about that quest particular question, many do want to know about why it is only Africa that seems to be before the ICC at the moment, when you have, uh, I guess, a, a case in point many would look at right now, the issue of Syria. And then also you do hear that the ICC is pursuing uh, cases in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in uh, Honduras, Colombia, but not yet, but not yet. Right now, the focus is African. The ICC is guided by the statute. The statute was negotiated and agreed upon by all the state's parties, including the African themselves. Now, the ICC can only act within the four corners of the statute. And amongst all the criticism that you hear about the ICC, no one, no one is saying that the ICC has acted outside the four corners of the statute. The law is the law. It tells us how to act, when to act, and where to act. And all the cases that we are handling and where we are not being able to do so, it is because our hands are tied. It is because the law does not allow us to do so. Um, if we were to go outside the four corners of the statute, then there would be problems. And all we are doing is applying the law as it is in the statute. If we go back to the case of Kenya, I think we all forget how the Kenyan cases are before the ICC. Firstly, there's no denying that crimes were committed in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Nobody can deny that. Secondly, it should be remembered that uh, Kenya itself, in accordance with the provisions of the statute, was granted the opportunity to investigate and prosecute these crimes. It was the Kenyans themselves who said that they are not able to or they are unwilling to do so, as a result of which, in accordance with the statute and in the law, the cases were then, um, this case, then the prosecutor had no option but to open the cases in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to address the crimes that, that were committed there. 